Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're building a keyboard. Actually, I'm pretty sure it's fairly simple. We're probably just opening it up. But this is the Geeks B Story 65 or version 3. Now, this keyboard was sent out to me by KP Republic in exchange for my honest review. Um, I have not done any of the previous revisions of these key, of this keyboard, so I'm interested to take a look at it. The sound test that I have heard, that's pretty much all I know about it. It sounds really, really nice, and it has a cool little blocker that allows some LED to come through, and I thought that was adorable. Uh, my wife saw the picture of it. She really liked it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive on in. We're going to build this up. Uh, we're going to go ahead and load it up also with some keys and switches also available from KP Republic. Uh, they've always been a big supporter of the community, and I, they just have a tremendous amount to offer in their store. I almost feel like they're the micro center of keyboards online. Now, it would be really nice if they had a physical store. I'd definitely drive across the country to go there. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started building the Geeks kb story 65 revision 3. now just fyi this is an in-stock keyboard available right now in several colors from kp republic all right so before taking a late look at the case itself let's go ahead and see what we have for build equipment all right looks like we have some feet we have some gasket socks we have an extra screw we have some plate mounted stabilizers that actually appear to be pre lubed. Mm -hmm. Nice. In this package, we have what looks like to be the PCB. We could actually go plateless with this PCB as you actually put the socks on the PCB itself. Oh, nice. We also have per key flex cuts. We have a couple of optional layouts here for a step caps lock. We do have the ability to put screw in stabilizers, but today we'll just be building it with what it has. It does look like we have an on and off switch underneath the shift key. Looks like the step caps lock might be the only alternate layout that I'm seeing. Uh, this nicely laid out PCB, well traced and silk screened. There's the JST connector for the battery. All right. And lest we forget, I've done this before a couple of times. Always make sure to go through all your bags. Here's a 2.4. I'm going to have to mark that soon, but thankfully at least we have a case so we can just keep it in here. Now, we also have, oh, we have a, oh, this is an actual plate. plate. This feels like an FR4 material and does give us the allowance there for the step caps lock. And here we have the foams. All right, that's a PET layer. It's going to be for the bottom of the case. This is the PET and poron. That's going to be for between the plate and the PCB. This is going to be the PET and poron layer for below the PCB. And here is our hi-fi layers. There's our PET plastic. I, I can get sheets of PET plastic, but it's just trying to cut these out. Also have the IXPE matching layer. These two layers are what a lot of manufacturers are now adding to their keyboards, and it gives that hi-fi um, sound profile. So we'll be adding these as well. We'll leave that in its case for right now. If we won't be needing it. That's for the 2.4. Now let's go ahead and pull this the case itself all right now there is double-sided tape on the bottom of this battery all right so i'm going to lay this down in here oh. now there's some extra so that we can do like this all right so that jst connector is actually for the daughter board and battery goes into the daughter board all right and it looks like we are dealing with a 3000 milliamp hour battery now, I need to find the right Torx to open up the case. So we've got six screws holding the inner or top frame down to the bottom frame. 
We can take that out. We see the diffuser. We can actually take this blocker out if we wanted to. But the diffuser allows the RGB to shine through that little star shape that the bunny is holding. And I think it's adorable, so I'm going to keep it. All right, first things first, we're going to put the under PET layer. And this basically uh, helps with the hi-fi layer. Like, it works just with... Um, just with the two above the PCB, but I found that adding a layer of PET below, not only does it prevent any sort of shocks that might happen, but it's not gonna really be the case because of all the foam that we have. Um, but, you know, this prevents any contact or any anything that's being conductive to contact with each other between the PCB and the plate. But it also helps to Probably it helps to deflect and kind of create more of a chamber in there. I'm kind of just guessing at why that helps from the little bit I do know. All right, so I want to say this is going to go. I know that before we start plugging this in, let's go ahead and get you out of the way. Make sure we don't bump you. Go ahead and put on these socks. So we're gonna go ahead and install the socks. They have a horizontal slit. And basically we just wanna slip one over each of these protruding tabs. All right. Looks like they were kind enough to include some extra pads in there, which is always appreciated. All right, now here is the connector always good to see where the pins are at if they're closer to in this situation it appears that they are closer to the top of the plastic enclosure they're closer to the top of the connector so we want to make sure that they're oriented the same way here i be making an executive decision and i'm going to cut a piece out here that's preventing it from sitting properly or it could just be that I'm not doing it the right way, but this is the only way I can see to fix this so that it'll sit in here properly and I can use all the pieces. I think that should do it. The, PC, the uh, gasket socks need to be sitting on the plate, but because this is getting pushed up, when I plug this in and lay it down, it's making them sit on top of this, which is making for a bit of a unpleasant sound. So. That's why I made this executive decision. Hopefully this will take care of it. And they did say it's version one here. So maybe uh, this will be fixed in version 1.1 or 1.2. We'll have to see. All right, so let me connect this one more time here. All right, we're in. All right, now it's not sitting on top of that. So now it's sitting where it should be sitting good now we can move on so we're not going to be doing screw and stabilizers i will come back to this and do some different combinations some without foam um and we'll also do screw and stabilizers at that point right now i just want to do it stock first we put down the pet layer we see it already has the cutouts for where the screw and stabs would go and then we put on top of that, the IXPE layer. Do our best to line it up. All right. Now, on top of that, we're going to go ahead and install the... This goes... This way. This is going to help keep this straightened out until we start putting some switches in there. Oh, wrong way. Yeah, here we go. All right, we do not have anything to screw the plate into the PCB, so we're going to use switches. So that's the next thing to choose. What switches should we go with? All right, so for this build, I decided to go with these Leachy Milk Made On 2024, Made In 2024. These are from Zook. Um, the last set of switches I tried from them were the bubblegum switches, also available from KP Republic. These I purchased myself. Uh, I heard sound test of these when like they were first getting announced right after I did my review of the bubblegum, and I had to get them. They are a 
medium, light medium tactile. It's a light weighted spring, but it's a more of a medium to heavier bump. It's a very interesting uh, tactile, which I quite enjoy. I haven't, I've only played with a few keys. I haven't yet to load one up. I think this is the perfect match. I know the, the red is ne not necessarily the same, um, but I think that this is going to make for a good combination with the the way that this one's constructed so we're going to load these up i will be doing a review of these here in the coming future because this is all in here it might actually serve me best for the first few to do outside of the case and just hold it on to everything this way i can actually give a little bit of backing all right get the space bar in All right, so now we're going to go ahead and install the stabilizers. And as we can see, they're already pre-lubricated, so there's nothing to do here. But get it under the plate, under the foam, and lock in place. They are a bit loose on the plate. I would like to see them a little bit tighter, but we do have the availability, and I'm going to uh, be upgrading these to screw-in stabilizers because that's just probably going to be the best in this situation especially since it's really just all ready for it all right now we go ahead and insert these switches all right now let's plug this back in and make sure everything is down in its own spot and here we are with the uh pcb and plate assembly all put together into the case we've got the gaskets on the plate We've taken out a switch here so that we can uh, leave the blocker in place, although the blocker that is here is removable. It has a light diffuser, and I really want to see that bunny holding that star. So let's go ahead and put this on here. And close it back up. All right, there's the keyboard lit up. It's obviously trying to find a signal to connect with, but that is adorable. Now let's go find a set of switches to match up to this beautiful keyboard. So here's a keycap set from Ghost Judges I've been meaning to use for a while. I haven't found the perfect keyboard. I think it's actually going to look really good. This one looks like the red velvet. It looks just like a really deep burgundy red but it's almost like a a brown i love the cream in there oh there is a logo it's just very light story 65 very nice but i think that these ghost judges keycaps are going to look nice especially with the cream this has it looks more like a burnt orange kind of uh, color with the legends but i think it'll work just nice almost has a copperish type of look and i think it's going to work well on here i don't know i could be wrong but hey we're building keyboards let's have fun so i'm going to go ahead and load it up with the ghost judges jockey keycap set and we'll be back for my final thoughts and the sound test Just the specs. Today we are building and taking a look at the Geek Speed Story 65 Revision 3. This is a 65% three mode mechanical keyboard with a blocker made from 6063 aluminum. It has a gasket mounted FR4 plate, a 1.2 millimeter flex cut PCB with screw and stabilizer support as well as hi-fi layers. It is available in several colors, including red velvet, milky yellow, milky blue, milky green, milky white, and milky pink. It uses closed source driver software. The battery has a 3000 milliamp hour capacity. 
and the keyboard comes weighing in at 1560 grams, fully loaded with switches and keycaps. The chin of this keyboard sits at 23 millimeters above the typing surface, while the back sits at 35 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of 8 degrees. This keyboard MSRPs for $121.78 from KP Republic. Links below. So I can't compare with the previous Story 65 revisions, but I can say that this one is definitely a lovely build. With the FR4 plate, I love the blocker. Um, I usually, yeah, do like the four keys there, but I can program it. Um, I The previous versions do appear to have been via, but they went with the closed source software for this one. But despite it being closed source, it does offer the functionality that I need to program the keys in a way that I can use the keyboard. But it sounds amazing with the tactiles, especially with all the phones. It has a very thocky bass sound, in my opinion. And despite being a gasket mount, it isn't that crazy. I mean, it definitely has flex, and you can see it. It doesn't take much to see the flex. But it's not overwhelming amount of flex. It really is a great 65% kit. Now, obviously, you know, you can take the blocker out and get the full four key column. I'm not sure about any different weights, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's not closer to a standard size for weight. But I personally like it. I like I I love the two-tone. I love that it has that milky inner top frame with the uh, velvety red. I'd call it more of a burgundy or an ox blood red, although they call it a burgundy. I'm really digging the 65%. I continue to be surprised at how well these keyboards that are being released are just continue to be so well made and so above and beyond even just a year ago um and at a fraction of the cost it's a, it's a buyer's market out there because it's more about choice i i know a lot of help posts have gone from you know more like one keyboard and another like which should i get this one or this one, a or b but now it's been like which one of these should I get? And it's a list of seven, eight keyboards because it's almost overwhelming the amount of choices out there. So um, there's a lot of keyboards that really will fit the bill for a lot of people. Obviously, little things for specific people are going to be, you know, needed. But a lot of these keyboards really do cover a lot of those specific needs. So, um, if you're new to the market, just do your research. Uh, feel free to, you know, jump on, ask questions. I mean, that's the best way to learn about something. But uh, I will say that it is overwhelming, especially if you are new to it. All of these acronyms, all of the different mounting styles, the profiles, the layouts, the materials, the plates the firmware open source close i mean there, there's a lot i completely get it so i can um i can feel for the those that are entering the hobby and how difficult it is that's why I'm, i do my best to help out and inform as much as possible anyway i do hope that you did enjoy the build and uh review of this geeks b Geeks B, I think I'm saying it right. Geeks B story, revision 365%. It sounds great with everything that it comes with it. I don't see a need to really mess with it, though. I will at some point come back to it and mess with it and mod it anyway and see what kind of tones I can. I'm going to see how deep I can get it 
Let me see if I can get it. Because, I mean, it already has a pretty deep tone. Naturally, I, I'd like to try to reach an even deeper tone. Something deep like a bass. Anyway, I do hope that you enjoyed the video. Yeah. If you have any questions, any suggestions for when I come back to it, please leave them down in the comments below. A like and a subscribe really does go a long way, so those are much appreciated. Anyway, I want to wish you awesome people an amazing day. And until the next transmission, keep calm and keep word on.